Welcome back. Uh, well, we're likely to see the much-awaited national logistics policy being released later this Friday. The policy aims to lower logistics costs in line with global standards through a comprehensive action plan and greater use of, uh, use of digitization and automation. I mean, uh, this is going to be much awaited in terms of what it can do to provide a fillip to the sector. Logistics costs, as companies across the board have consistently told us over the years, uh, is, an is an important metric which needs to be brought down, brought lower. Uh, we've got an uh, important company, uh, maybe one of the leaders in that space, uh, uh, All Cargo Logistics. Ravi Jhakar is Chief Strategy Officer of the company. He's joining us right now uh, to take some uh, questions. Uh, Ravi, great to have you with us here. Thank you very much for your time. Could you uh, tell us, I mean, how are you looking at this uh, much-awaited policy which will be out uh, tomorrow? Uh, and uh, what, do you, what do you hope to see as part of the policy in terms of actionable items? Yeah, so I think, you know, um, we are very hopeful and very confident that this logistics policy is being rolled out could perhaps be the defining moment in the Indian logistics industry. And why I carry such optimism is based upon what we have seen from this government. You know, you talk about UPI, the way the government created the whole platform and brought all the stakeholders together, or the more recent open network of digital commerce, where logistics also plays a role, but it's largely about uh, creating an ecosystem and bringing the buyers and sellers together. I think national logistics policy is going to be a key enabler of strategic confluence in the logistics industry, bringing along all the stakeholders wherein the government is defining policy and building out a platform. And the best part about this policy is it carries a very holistic approach. It's not just limited to saying that, you know, certain kilometers of roads would be built or something X, Y, Z would be done. It takes a very holistic view that the logistics as an industry is an enabler of economic growth, you know, for trade competitiveness, for increasing the exports in the country, for driving domestic growth. For anything, logistics has to be appreciated for the business and industry to be competitive. And in this regard, the government has laid out a very clear framework. And of course, you would only know uh, tomorrow when the policy gets unveiled. But if you look at the discussions which the government has had with various stakeholders, it appears that there's a comprehensive view on infrastructure, which is the starting point. You need to enable logistics only by providing one plus infrastructure and then enabling that with technology. And uh, whatever we have seen so far of, you know, various drafts which have been put up in public domain, it appears that the thinking is going to be about providing complete transparency and visibility around logistics assets. And if the government can incentivize creation of infrastructure on an uh, expedited way, we have seen the kind of impact which is being, you know, forecasted with one or two dedicated trade corridors which are coming up. If the government can truly multiply the efforts under this national logistics policy and roll out uh, you know, uh, in a much improved highway network, a much improved railway network, and then digitize the entire asset base, providing transparency and visibility. I think this could be a paradigm a shift in the way logistics, uh, you know, is, uh, is organized in the country. We could see much more use of technology. And on the other point, if I look at the logistics policy, I think there's a huge impetus on the sustainability as well. And on one hand, when we are taking climate change goals, where the Honorable Prime Minister has been talking about very bold ambitions from the country, Logistics and transport is an important contributor to the carbon footprint, and therefore it is quite important that any such policy which gets rolled out talks about reducing the carbon footprint as well. Sure. And whatever again, you know, it, Ravi, it seems to be on the right. Yeah. Got that, got that. So that is on the national logistics policy, but I just want to talk a little bit about your own company, because at the analyst meeting, you gave some aggressive targets for revenues. You spoke about a 25,000 to 30,000 crore revenue target by FY26. That's quite a wide range. So just wanted to understand what are the immediate targets that you're looking at and how do you plan to achieve it? Yeah, so I think, you know, we have been uh, building our business growth very robustly across the last three, four years. And, uh, you know, the, the variables which remain beyond our control are how the market behaves. We are forecasting and assuming in our assumptions that perhaps we see 12 to 18 months of subdued growth given the recession environment across the world. And then we see a bounce back over the remaining 80 to 24 months if you look at the next three years. So that's the reason why some of these, uh, you know, factors are beyond our control. And with so many uh, businesses in our uh, segment, when we put them together, we are, and we try to be, you know, uh, more cautious and therefore a broad range of numbers that we have given out as the management aspirations. And uh, we are quite uh, confident on the management side that we should continue to uh, pursue the growth strategy that we have marked upon over the last two, three years. And we see, that the momentum should sustain. Naturally, we are not 
completely immune to the global macroeconomic environment. But the way the businesses are structured, I would say there's a significant amount of inbuilt hedge in our uh, businesses, and that gives us the confidence to uh, sustain the momentum that we have built over the last few quarters. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in FY22, you ended with about 20,000 crores of revenues. Even if you look at a 15% growth, it's 23,000 crores by FY23. Is that a logical estimate or could you do better than that? So I would say you know, in our business, uh, some of the costs such as the ocean freight is a pass-through cost and therefore revenue may not be the right indicator. But if you look at the gross margins or if you look at you know uh, the EBITDA numbers on F2 terms, that would be a right indicator. And uh, depending upon the market growth, it could grow significantly from here or if there's a contraction or recession uh, in terms of the growth on the trade side, we would still largely hold on to the uh, performance that we demonstrated. Mm. Uh, right. Ravi, uh, just to, on, the, on the shipping side, uh, spot freight rates have come off very uh, uh, quite dramatically. And uh, one is starting to hear for the first time uh, liners, shipping liners asking for uh, lower, uh, I mean negotiating at least, uh, lower contract rates as well. Could you could you talk to us if you're seeing that and what impact what implication does that have for your business? Yeah, so we have also been noticing that you know the spot rates have declined tremendously starting from May, and particularly over the last six weeks we have seen significant decline in the spot uh, ocean freight rates. And as you would know, the contextual rates are very different uh, on which most of the larger companies such as ourselves work. But clearly, there are two things which we can see from here. One, if you compare to the last year. We saw a significant momentum in terms of pickup and volumes out of the festive season. The current year does not have that kind of, uh, you know, momentum. There are certain countries in Western Europe which rather have seen pressure on volume. And while U.S. has seen, you know, 3% increase in the imports in the month of July, overall the environment is not as uh, bullish in terms of the festive ramp up as we saw last year. And that is the reason why we see a significant decline in these spot freight rates. From our business standpoint, our ability to contract at reduced rates would allow us to pass on the benefit to the uh, end consumer, and that should basically facilitate the trade. And, you know, um, the inflation has put a bit of a negative pressure. If the trade rates continue to come down, that should allow the trade to be more competitive, and that should perhaps contribute to the uh, world trade growth. And, you know, as a company, we would stand to benefit from that. I want a little bit about uh, to talk about the multimodal transport operations business. In uh, the quarter gone by, it was a good 70% growth that you saw on a year-on-year -year basis. But just wanted to understand what is a sustainable quarterly run rate that you can look at in the MTO business? Is it 5,000 crores per quarter that you can at least hold on to? So I would say that, you know, uh, the like I said, you know, the revenue is something which depends on the freight rate. So if freight rates go down, we could see, you know, a marginal 10 to 15 percent decline on that as well, which then gets compensated by the same volume growth. You know, so the current numbers of about 5,000 crores uh, could remain sustained. The gross margin would not uh, see an outward journey, even if the ocean freight rates were to go down and the revenue was to go down. So I would say, at the gross margin level, the performance is largely sustainable, with um, only minor impact possible. On the revenue side, there could be fluctuations depending on how the freight rates operate. Okay, we'll leave it at that then. Thanks a lot for joining in. Uh, the stock has done phenomenally well and uh, that's the management talking about uh, not just the demerger but also about how the businesses will shape up from here on. But let's move on. Uh, there's lots happening on the real estate